Hey, good morning, y'all. Josh is severe weather and happy Friday to you. We've got some weather changes coming for next week. Um, the severe weather we've seen over the last several weeks is going to take a bit of a break. And instead, I'm going to be talking about the polar vortex, not to scare the mess out of everybody. It's, it's not supposed to be a scary term, but um, it is definitely uh, coming back to bring us a taste of some of the very cold weather we haven't seen in quite some time. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen with you and show you what's going to <clears throat> excuse me, what that's going to look like, a much colder weather pattern next week across much of the northern and eastern portions of the country, and even parts of the deep south as well. Uh, you can see by the end of next week, we've got some frigid air moving in over the fresh snowpack here of New England and eastern Canada. And uh, farther south, we've got a contrast zone between warm air that is still stuck here over Florida and much colder air dropping down to Texas and Louisiana. And with it, we've got one or two waves of low pressure that are poised to track right along where those temperature gradient, where the temperature gradient exists between uh, the very cold air up to the north and the much warmer air off to the south and east. And I know by a northern standards, this isn't going to look like a major winter storm. But for those of us that have not seen a lot of winter yet, we are. Uh, going to see at least some potential for maybe two waves of low pressure uh, starting around next Tuesday and Wednesday and then another one late next week where ice and snow will be in the forecast for many of you uh, from North Texas across the uh, central uh, parts of the Mississippi Valley and then into the mid-Atlantic states and maybe North Carolina as well. Details are it's still a bit murky. We've got kind of two camps that I'll be talking about, two different possible scenarios. Uh, but nonetheless, um, as we see this cold plunging southward uh, and meeting its resistance point here, right along where I've got my black arrow dr uh, drawn, uh, we are going to have that contrast zone, moisture feeding up over it, and the potential to see some wintry weather. Uh, so this could be winter's last gasp in the southeast. We will have to see. Uh, but certainly, it's going to be a colder pattern than what we've had here starting early next week. So before then... Uh, I do want to talk about this uh, upcoming storm here across the upper Midwest and Northern Plains, the Great Plains. We've got winter storm warnings that are in effect here from Montana and Idaho across Wyoming and all the way into Iowa and advisories getting into the Chicagoland area in Michigan where we will have some snow this weekend. Um, so this is the beginning of the Arctic blast sets coming in from the northern parts of Canada. Uh, the winter storm severity index from the weather prediction center shows that there will be major impacts in the mountains here uh, even moderate impacts across uh, the great plains from northern nebraska into iowa where we haven't had a lot of snow recently this winter uh, so definitely if you have travel plans in this region uh, do be prepared for uh, hazardous driving conditions and some closures and disruptions and that's going to spread eastward uh, as we get to saturday night and sunday into michigan as well all right, so let's talk about the polar vortex. This is from weatherbell.com. The vortex here, you can see the coldest air at the uh, tropopause um, is uh, locked in around Baffin Island in the northern Hudson Bay. This is this morning on the GFS ensembles. You will see as we get to the weekend, we will start to see pieces of that polar vortex shifting south and bringing cold down into the northwest and the northern plains. This is on Sunday. As we get into early next week, that cold starts sweeping into the southwest and across the northern part of the country here. And as we get into the middle of the week, that polar vortex is dropping from Baffin Island down into northern Ontario. And as we get into Thursday and Friday, it shifts eastward into Quebec. So the polar vortex has made a big uh, push southeastward by over a thousand kilometers. And that is going to allow some of the coldest air of the season to move into New England. Um, we did see, obviously, brutal cold in December across much of the country. This is not looking like a repeat across the entire country. Uh, however, for New England and eastern Canada, with all the snow we've had over the last three to four storms here through January, uh, the ground is very cold. That is going to trap any warm air and allow temperatures to plummet. Uh, so we are going to see a significant cold wave for the second half of next week into next weekend over eastern Canada, New England, the Great Lakes region, especially northern New England, where all the snow is on the ground. However, uh, down south, we continue to have, um, with this extreme of the uh, polar vortex, we continue to have a very La Nina-like strong region of high pressure. In fact, 
uh, temperatures in Can in uh, Cuba here the last couple of days were in the lower 90s, setting all time January records in Havana. Uh, so uh, there's a, a huge tug of war going on here, a big battleground. Uh, see this kind of yellow line here? That is the separation point late next week between much colder air lurking to your north and much warmer air. And this is one of those extremes you just don't really see that often. This is a uh, pretty insane here with spring battling winter. Um, so we are definitely going to be tracking storm tracks across the southern U.S. And models are going to uh, continue to struggle on agreeing with these for the next few days. But I will show you what I can. Uh, the upper of uh, the um, polar vortex here does weaken and starts retreating back uh, into Greenland and then starts to fade as we get into next week. So the good news about this brutal cold is that it does not look to be locked in for a very long period of time. It will be cold. Don't get me don't get me wrong here across much of Canada, across the Great Lakes and Northeast. Uh, but we are not looking at an extended period of cold. Um, this this period of cold actually would be a little bit longer than what we saw right around Christmas time. Remember how quickly things thawed out. Uh, this looks like it's going to stick around probably for at least one week um, before uh, before the cold moderates. I mean, it's still pretty cold up here across Canada in two weeks, uh, but <clears throat> the extreme portion of it is only going to last a few days. So let's take a look here at the upper level heights that will also kind of show you the polar vortex here. Uh, p bringing pieces of energy down into the north central United States, first starting in the Rockies this weekend and then spreading southwestward. We've got one storm which will pinch off across California, and that'll bring some uh, rain and mountain snow to southern Cal. It's been a about a week and a half before we've seen any rain. Uh, we're not talking an atmospheric river. You may have seen that in the news. That is not the case here. There really isn't a very strong jet uh, plowing into California. There is kind of more of a more of an amplified jet bringing some moisture up into the northwest here, but not not an atmospheric river, thank goodness. Uh, but you see the cold spinning south and eastward into Canada at the end of next week. That's going to produce some very low heights in here. And uh, we'll also continue to drive storm systems eastward rather than up the coast. So uh, the, the uh, potential for a nor'easter is not here next week. In fact, we're going to see impulses coming through the central and southern United States. And then it starts warming back up here slowly as we get into the week of February 6th. All right, so temperatures, we'll start with those. These are anomalies. Yes, it's chillier here in the southeast, but uh, that cold fades quickly by the end of this weekend, and we've got a warm look to early next week. However, much colder air is diving down with departures of 30 to 35 below the average. And this is typically the coldest time of the year in the Rockies. So we're talking temperatures at night, which will probably be in the 20 to 40, <clears throat> excuse me, the 20 to 40 degree below zero range in the higher elevations here. Very cold air coming down, uh, almost reminiscent of what we saw right before Christmas time. Pretty cold as well in the upper Midwest. Um, as we get into next week, that cold does fade some, but it does spread southward. You can see there's a, a very strong contrast right between deep south Texas all the way up into the mid Atlantic region. It is still staying mild across Florida. And the majority of the southeast will have heavy rain and probably some thunderstorms in this region in multiple waves, but the west is chilly. Now, you can see that as we get into Wednesday and Thursday of next week, another push of very cold air comes down behind the winter storm that we're dealing with this weekend. And you can see the warmth in the southeast does slowly start to get pushed southeast. So Florida is still warm, but it is getting much chillier here across the Carolinas, across Louisiana, the Tennessee Valley with this colder air and a, an active storm track, we do have the potential now to see what will probably be some very difficult forecasting days ahead of us for winter weather. However, this may be our best shot this winter for winter weather across this region, and that includes ice as well, freezing rain and sleet. Um, as we get on into the weekend, um, the warmth still holds on in Florida, so you never really get that cold across Florida except for the north. And then we see the cold air starting to moderate and temperatures still chilly next week, uh, but certainly warming back up pretty quickly. And by the 8th and 9th of February, we can say goodbye to the cold stretch of weather that we're looking at for much of the eastern part of the country, um, while the northern parts of the Rockies and uh, the northern plains will stay chilly with respect to average. So it's definitely going to be a colder look to what we've seen here for some time, but this stretch of cold does not last very long. We're only talking about a five to eight day stretch of colder than average temperatures. The European kind of counters that as well. It does not have the polar vortex 
uh, getting quite as uh, deep into New England and the Northeast, but it does have the cold here at the end of next week. Um, what it does differ with the GFS in, it does show some really extreme cold across three or four states. And this kind of cold looks a lot like what we saw right around um, the beginning of uh, Christmas week last, last uh, December, um, 40 degree below average temperature. So the European differs from the GFS in that it is colder here, but milder in the Northeast. Nonetheless, it is cold. So um, we definitely see that happening. And then Florida, you're kind of on an, on an island here. The Florida Peninsula stays mild to slightly above average, uh, near average to slightly above average, and then warming right back up as we get to the second half of the week after next. And then finally, I'll show you the Canadian ensemble here. And you can see the cold quickly, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, quickly gets wiped out here in the southeast over the weekend and then quickly advances across Montana and Wyoming over the end of the weekend. And we see actually the Canadian is colder than the other models, and that may be a bit of a bias that it has. Typically, the Canadian shows things a little bit colder than what they end up being. Um, but however, uh, it is still pretty cold. You guys can see that here, 40 degree uh, temperature anomalies below average. And then that expands into the Midwest here next week and then into New England and the Northeast over the weekend, but not as extreme as the European. So it shows uh, the cold lasting longer right on into the following week. I think it's gonna be wrong here. Uh, really tough to argue against this warm pattern across the uh, mid-Atlantic region and the Northeast. So the Canadian, which typically runs too cold, I think will be too cold here, but nonetheless, uh, it is still gonna be cold across the Northern Plains and the Rockies. So that's what our next uh, two weeks look like. Here's the uh, operational GFS. And again, not an official forecast, but gives you an idea of what's happening. Uh, Clipper across Eastern Canada Saturday, uh, storm system farther south into the Great Lakes on Sunday, spreading into New England early on Monday. We do have heavy thunderstorms over the central Gulf Coast, but nothing like what we saw Tuesday and Wednesday with the severe weather outbreak. Um, but we see another wave coming out of Southern California, picking up moisture with it from Texas on Wednesday morning. And at this point, it looks like primarily rain here. The cold is kind of bypassing to the east. Keep that in mind. However, we do have a stream of snow and some ice over the Ohio River Valley. And then with the cold moving into eastern Canada, that pushes colder air down into that moisture zone and produces some snow over parts of Virginia, West Virginia, the Delmarva, and northern North Carolina, and maybe a little bit of ice in there as well. Um, there were some more extreme models yesterday that showed uh, more significant amounts of snow pushing down into North Carolina. That seems to be the outlier at this point. If you take the model average, it looks like maybe it does try to snow in North Carolina, north of 40, uh, but the, um, the better chances look like they're gonna be farther off to the north over Southern Virginia. So Richmond, Virginia Beach, and Roanoke could see our first accumulating snow of the winter here Thursday night into Friday before that moves out, and then things will warm back up next week. Um, the Northeast, if you're in New York and Philly, it looks like everything dances around to you. The first storm dances around your north here on Sunday night and Monday. And then the next couple of storms dance around just to your south here Thursday into Friday. And so the snowless streak here of accumulating snow in New York City is still likely, well, I'll say likely, but still looks like it could remain intact. And uh, that's just pretty remarkable and pretty unfortunate if you like snow with everything going north of you and now seeing things going south of you. The European model and the Canadian model do differ from the GFS on the storm tracks next week. And I do wanna show you that. Things are in agreement here through the weekend as you might expect. Um, but then as we get into early next week, we see a more significant wave in Texas here on Monday night and Tuesday morning with ice moving into Northwest Texas, sleet and snow over Oklahoma. And uh, the GFS does not show this. The GFS is warmer and has rain here and it's suppressed a bit more to the south, but the European has more significant freezing rain. Those are the pink colors, sleet, which is the orange, not as significant, and then snow in the same places that just got it here a few days ago. Um, this will scatter eastward and kind of flatten out. So we see more significant amounts of freezing rain over Northwestern Texas, Oklahoma, and even Northern Arkansas, and some snow uh, across the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas. So a much different look here by the way, this uh, the first wave does make its way into North Carolina and Virginia here, but it's faster on Thursday. And then wave number two is weaker here on Friday and Friday night. But still, uh, with the GFS and the, Euro and the European model both showing snow in Virginia and northern North Carolina, 
Um, that will probably be our best shot this winter of seeing that happen before things start to calm down here over the weekend by Saturday night and Sunday. Uh, by the way, the European is an outlier, but does push the cold out a lot quicker and allows something to maybe try to sneak up the northeast coast here. But this is still nine to 10 days out, so I'm not forecasting snow at this point uh, for the northeast, including Philly, New York, and Connecticut. Um, this is one model run, and it will likely continue to change. If that model trend continues, then our fortune may change here in the northeast. But right now, uh, still way too far out in advance to make that call. And finally, I'll show you the Canadian, which I think agrees more with the European model. And you can see uh, early next week, we have kind of a battleground here. Not as much uh, freezing rain in Oklahoma and Northwest Texas, but there is some over Eastern parts of those states. Um, but then as we get into Tuesday, we see uh, freezing rain on the Canadian, at least going much farther South, maybe all the way to Round Rock and Austin here on Tuesday morning, um, which would be a lot more significant Memphis and up into Louisville, Kentucky, uh, the Canadian model is showing a major ice storm. This is not what I am necessarily forecasting. This is just what this model is showing. Uh, the European is kind of middle ground between the GFS, which is warmer, and the Canadian, which is colder. And I would say right now I'm leaning towards the middle ground, the European, but that could change. Um, according to the Canadian, though, we do have uh, an interesting setup here in the Northeast by Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, with a more significant snowfall across the interior of the Northeast, and then for the big cities, maybe a wintry mix, including some ice with that cold air moving into the northeast. And then you can see yet another wave coming through on Thursday across the south. This is producing a wintry mix and ice in Dallas and northern Louisiana. And then it warms up some as that tracks northeast. But the cold air does spill down east of the Appalachians and again allows it to be cold enough for ice in western North Carolina and southwest Virginia and some light to moderate snow across southern Virginia. So this is a week out. I expect it's going to change. I'm still going to show it to you. Um, but my goal right here is not to hype up a major winter storm for everybody. It's just to show that there's going to be a stripe that's uncertain right now, but is there uh, from, you know, northern Texas, whoops, northern Texas and across into northern North Carolina, Virginia and Kentucky, where I do think we can call it a winter storm at this point, maybe two winter storms. Uh, or maybe just a long duration event uh, where some form of ice or snow is certainly possible at this point. How much and uh, to a degree of how severe it is right now, it is still too soon to make that call. I'm going to have a video tomorrow that talks about that and gives you a little bit more insight into it. But know that these models are likely to continue to change as we still have not seen these storms form yet. They are not in the picture here until early to middle parts of next week. Mm -hmm. At that point, I think we will have a little bit more confidence. And I say we, that's the general meteorological community. I mean, I don't do this myself. There are people that make the models. There's people that forecast. And um, I, I like communicating with them because I think great minds think alike. Iron sharpens iron. So anyway, I'm going to show you snow totals from the GFS. Here's our big storm um, moving right across the Great Plains into uh, New England, once again, we're seeing more snow. That's why the GFS shows so much cold at the end of next week, because we are continuing to see large amounts of snow falling here. I mean, this is, you know, maybe potentially up to a foot here and even more across New Brunswick. Then our next storm in the interior west, that will be what um, looks like it's not going to produce snow, but rather ice. Uh, but then uh, as that spreads eastward, we see maybe some potential light snowfall or sleet here across the southern Appalachians and the mid-Atlantic region. But the bigger storm that I've talked about here is Thursday into Friday, and you guys can see that uh, with the potential for six to eight inches of snow stretching right across uh, Virginia, which includes Charlottesville, Richmond, and um, the northern neck here. That moves out, and then that's it for snow for quite some time across the uh, eastern U.S., at least the uh, mid-Atlantic region. European model, again, has a different look, and let me show you guys the 24 hour snow. And again, this doesn't do the Kashera, which is a little bit higher than the 10 to one. So kind of use your imagination, go in between the two. But um, this one shows that snow going right across the US Canadian border from Michigan into Maine and New Brunswick. And let me show you the zero Z here because the um, the six E doesn't go out, but uh, for three days. And you can see uh, it shows more significant snowfall across Oklahoma and Arkansas next Tuesday, spreading into Tennessee light amounts and then uh, two storm systems on the European. So storm one ends up in Southwest Virginia, late Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Storm two gathers from New Mexico into Western Oklahoma, much like the one we just saw here earlier this week. 
And you can see uh, the European goes nuts here with maybe a foot of snow over southern Virginia Thursday night. Also, maybe eight to 10 inches of snow across western Oklahoma uh, Wednesday night or Thursday night into early Friday morning. And then that storm, too, could produce yet some more snow across Virginia. So the European is in between the GFS and the Canadian. If it's right, we're talking some major snow in Virginia, North Carolina here at the end of the week. So stay tuned on that. Um, The Canadian, I'll show you guys again. I think it's going to end up being a little bit too extreme here, but nonetheless, I'm going to show it. And you guys can see we're in good agreement here with our storm systems into early next week. As we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, you'll see that the Canadian doesn't do a lot with this first wave as far as snow. It's going to be more ice in this region. And I can show you guys that, I think. Um, where's my ice? Maybe I don't have it here. That's all right. Um, and then you can see as we get later into the week, there's just a very small, a pitiful amount of snow here with a lot of this being freezing rain. Uh, this is Friday and Friday night. And then we see things quickly turning warmer after that. So I'm more in the European camp at this point. Here's the ensemble, by the way. And you can see the ensemble. Well, it does show snowfall here in the Northeast, but it's taking every potential solution and averaging it out. What I think will happen is we'll actually see an opposite where you average everything out and you get one system up here and then the next system down here and that's it. Sorry, folks. But yeah, pretty good, uh, pretty good chance here to see some accumulating snow in Virginia, maybe northern North Carolina, northeast Tennessee, eastern Kentucky. And this would be Thursday into Friday. And also the same deal from New Mexico into uh, western Oklahoma as well. This is 24 hour snowfall. After that, the uh, possibilities for snow do start climbing again across the Northeast and in particular north of New York City and maybe including Boston here as well next weekend. And the European Ensemble, I think that's what I just showed you. Yep, European Ensemble, sorry I duplicated here. The Canadian Ensemble here um, shows that the threat for winter weather is farther north but does include the Northeast here Wednesday into Thursday. And then we see an increase farther south into North Carolina uh, and Southern Virginia here Thursday night into Friday morning. Also the next wave over Texas and Oklahoma. And then interestingly, the average of all the Canadian models, which I think will end up being too cold, has some significant snowfall in the northern parts of North Carolina, including Elizabeth City and up to about Portsmouth, Virginia. So stay tuned right now, too soon to make a forecast, just watching trends. But the trends are certainly looking more wintry than we've seen yet this winter in uh, parts of the mid-atlantic region and also again across texas oklahoma and arkansas i appreciate y'all's time today please if you could like this video leave me some comments i'm happy to respond to them please keep it nice um i i don't know exactly what's going to happen yet people who claim to i i don't agree with um but if you do uh, if you do have the uh, need to know more then i really encourage you to subscribe to this channel um, I will have more videos tomorrow and then next week diving into more of the details on what could happen here as we get into the uh, middle and second part of next week across parts of the Mid-South when we deal with some wintry weather, uh, which I'm actually looking forward to because I don't know about you, but people keep bugging me. Hey, when's it going to snow? When's it going to snow? I'm in Raleigh, by the way. We haven't had anything other than a couple flakes two weeks ago. Um, so maybe, uh, maybe I'll have some things to actually talk with them about. So thank you all so much for your time and your support. Um, I want to give all the glory to God for allowing me to share this with you all. And of course, through his son, Jesus Christ, as I am a Christian man and want to proclaim my faith with you. And real quick, if you have a minute, just wanted to share a verse with you that I think is really important. And I think we all need to be reminded of whether or not you're a believer. I think we all run into uh, the anxiety of worrying about what's next, what's going to happen tomorrow. Well, Jesus says in Matthew 6, 25, to do not worry. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying at a single hour to your life, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Is that If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not 
much more clothe you, you of little faith. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all of these things and your heavenly father knows that you will need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And I will tell you guys, um, for 30 years of my life, I was not a Christian. Um, I had a lot of anxiety. I still, from time to time, do worry. I think we all do. We're all sinful in nature. Uh, anxiety is a real thing. Depression is a real thing. But know that the promise from Jesus is that um, you will be given tomorrow, whether it be here on earth or eternally, if you choose to believe in him. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Listen, worry is just a down payment on something that may never happen. Are you really going to truly worry so much about tomorrow that it makes you sick? Or are you going to know that you can seek the Lord uh, Jesus Christ through God and his heavenly kingdom that will be given to you as well? That is the heavenly promise, John 3, 16, eternal life. So after 30 years of my life, when I was seeking the kingdom, finally, when that door was open for me to become a Christian, I've realized that Yes, um, tough times are going to continue to happen for all of us, but we don't need to lose any sleep worrying over them. We need to seek God first, and he will guide us to all of the riches in heaven. And if you have any prayer requests and you are worrying, I am happy to pray for you. I care for you all and want to let you know that I'm not just shooting these videos out here for likes and clicks. I really do have a message to share, and it's important to me, and I really hope that uh, you can see that and that you can be open with me as well and share your concerns as I'm happy to pray for you. And if you could pray for me as well, I would really appreciate that. So I love you all and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'll talk to you again in the morning. Take care and God bless you.